Hey everyone, welcome back to the van. Today I want to talk about first aid kits. Um, this is an update to a video that I did a long time ago. It's one of my most popular videos and it's how I, as a WFA, a wilderness first aid instructor, does first aid kits. And I want to update it because things change over time and we learn more and I've changed sort of the way that I do first aid kits. Um, and the sort of incidents, the situation of my life has changed, which has affected the way that I do first aid kits. Um, and so I want to update some things and change some things around, but I also want to show you exactly how I prep a new first aid kit. So I bought a new first aid kit um, that I'm going to work into my rotation, uh, and it is brand new. We're going to break the seal, open it up, and show you how I prep and build a first aid kit. Uh, that's what we're going to do. Let's go. Okay, so I've got three first aid kits here. I've got a little one, a medium sized one, and a big, big, big one. Um, and really the medium sized one is kind of bigger than medium size. Maybe that's really a large and that's really an extra large. Um, this first aid kit is brand new. It still has tags, it still is sealed, and we're going to break that seal and uh, build out this first aid kit the way that I use them. Uh, this big, big, big one, is the first aid kit that I use on multi-day expeditions. Um, it is not a form factor that I really like, um, but I will be dead honest and say I got it for free from a former employer, uh, and so I have adapted it and continued to build it out. Um, it's a good kit. It still needs a few things in it, but essentially the way that it's broken out is into sections, which is something about this kit that I do like. It's got a wound care section. It calls it wound care burn blister, first aid manual, medications, instruments. I don't know what instruments people are packing. Uh, fracture sprain, which is a little small, and CPR bleeding. Bleeding and wounds, I think, should be in the same place, but that's neither here nor there. And so fracture sprain, I've got um, cravats, also called triangular bandages for splinting. Uh, I've got some things that I'll add to that as well that don't fit inside here. Um, bleeding CPR, I've got a CPR face mask and gloves. Um, and my gloves that I really like, at the moment I'm using Halyard Sterling. Uh, I really prefer the Kimberly Clark Sterling Nitrile. This is still a nitrile, um, but it's with COVID it's gotten hard for you to get those gloves. Um, but these are a close second, really good, not that expensive, fine gloves that work for you. Um, these fit really well, which I really like. Um, in the middle, got a syringe cap. Not quite sure why I have that. Let's just put that up there. Um, this space is still open. This has a big oversized roll of tape. Um, this is open because I need to add to it uh, a large uh, ace wrap. Um, I'm moving away from tape and moving more towards ace wraps uh, because uh, the research has changed and is showing essentially that the uh, tape is, is like, if you think of like taping an ankle, uh, is not uh, holding up in terms of support throughout the length of a day, whereas an ace wrap you can constantly adjust. And so really nice to have that ace wrap, I'm an ace wrap down, so I need to add one to there. Um, I also, I don't have a, oh yes I do, I have a, a first aid book, I've got uh, some poison IVX, I've got a pair of trauma shears, I've got a thermometer, uh, and that is really the bulk of what I would need over here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over here, this should go in in there as well. That was from it opening for a student once. I got two good pairs of tweezers. Um, I like tweezers. This is what came with the kit. This is what I added to the kit. Um, and these are tweezerman.com tweezers. They make really nice tweezers. Um, really good for getting out splinters, things like that. And then over here in wound care is where I've got the bulk of the stuff, which is the stuff you really need. Um, so I've added over here an irrigation syringe, uh, lots of uh, 4x4s and ABD pads, 
um, roller gauze, band-aids are hiding back in here, lots of stuff like that, and then two Knowles wound kits. So that is, I could clear up any wound with that stuff right here. I've also got um, some glacier gel and some burn cream in here. Um, now what I add to this that is not gonna fit in here is this stuff. This kit is really gonna live in a big dry bag. And so I'm gonna add to it my stethoscope, my BP cuff and a maglite are both in here. I'm gonna add a SAM splint. I really like SAM splints. And then I'm gonna add, uh, this is from when I worked for REI. This is from when I worked in EMS. Uh, this is um, essentially uh, protocols to sort of operate by. And I think they're a good set of pro protocols, which is why I still carry them. Um, these would be issued to instructors, which is how I got them. And then this is an ALS field guide that I carried when I was a paramedic. And it's got just tons of useful information, including a med guide. Um, so I'm going to add those two things in here. And then this stuff, along with the uh, kit itself is going to just go, as I said, in a, in a like, I think it's a 15 or a 20 liter dry bag. And then this will live in front of my feet in my kayak on multi-day trips. When I'm not using it on a multi-day trip, it lives here in the van under the bench seat so that it's ready to go for anything that might happen. Oh, the other thing that I would add to this for a multi-day is um, any personal meds that I might need or pain relievers, like my favorite over-the-counter pain reliever, things like that are things that are, are in here. Um, and so that's my big Mondo kit. One other thing I might add, these I also got from when I worked at REI. These are soap notes. Uh, and so it's a good thing to have in your first aid kit is some form of soap note. Uh, SOAP is an acronym, stands for Subjective, Objective, Anticipated Problems, and PLAN. Um, and A, it's a good cheat sheet for running through a patient assessment. Um, B, I'm going to have to take notes anyway. Um, and C, this is printed on waterproof paper, so it holds up really well. Oh, and on the back, it's got a patient assessment uh, on it. Um, and so, uh, really good to have in your kit um, and some form of writing utensil. I do pencils. Um, I do black wing pencils because uh, I like black wing pencils, but you can sharpen them with a knife uh, as opposed to pens, which always explode when you actually really need them. Let's talk about what is not in here. There is not quick clot. There is not a suture kit. There is not a uh, commercial tourniquet device. There is not an Israeli bandage. There are none of those things. And here's why. The likelihood that I would need that sort of thing in the, with the stuff that I do is pretty slim, like microscopically slim. When I was on the ambulance, I worked amputations, I worked gunshot wounds, I worked uh, stabbing wounds, and for none of those did I ever need a, a tourniquet device or quick clot or anything like that. So I generally don't carry that stuff. But what I tell people is, if you work with guns for a living, if you work with axes for a living, if you work with chainsaws for a living, then maybe you should carry that stuff. But particularly with the quick clot, keep in mind that it expires. Um, I was given quick clot when it was first released, and I was excited to give it a shot and see if it was faster. Um, and in fact, it expired before I had a chance to use it because I've never needed it. Okay, so that is the big Mondo kit. Oh, yeah, so there's a Sam splint here. I also pack an additional Sam splint. So I think two Sam splints is fine for me because I'm a paddler and I don't care how much things weigh. This, this is my slightly bigger kit. So maybe if I'm doing a three-day trip, I'll bring this guy. And this is built out just like that, but smaller. It's got all the same stuff. I would add my pain relievers. Here are gloves, irrigation, good syringes, ace wrap, cravats, band-aids and stuff like that, wound care, um, blister care, roller gauze, very, very similar stuff, trauma shears, very, very similar stuff. Oh, this is my uh, pulse oximeter, uh, which measures the amount of oxygen in your blood, which is... I think that it, I don't know how accurate this is, but what it does do accurately is it measures pulse rate. So when I'm working with a patient, I will do their first pulse manually, and then I will keep track of their pulse 
with this thing. Um, and this is in this kit, not the big Mondo one, because this is the one that I use most of the time. Uh, so I'm at 98% oxygen and my heart rate is 90, I think because I'm talking a lot and because I just worked out. Uh, so that's in here also. Uh, relatively straightforward, um, but you can see, gee, Brett, why is there so much empty space in here? We'll get to that in a minute. Um, but this is my kit. Oh, I, I, do I have a first aid book in here? I don't. I really like the, uh, the Knowles. Uh, pocket guide that if you take a wilderness first aid course you are given a pocket guide it's smaller than a first aid book so it works better in kits like that that's the medium-sized kit okay let's get real let's do this now that i put that away i need a pair of trauma shears Okay, so this is a heart outdoor first aid kit. Uh, these used to be REI kits, um, the same design, the same everything, the just with the REI logo on them. Uh, I like the way that these open and these are easy to work from. This is the $23 kit. Um, and so it's a good size for day trips and things like that. This is gonna live in a little tiny, like 10 liter dry bag, which lives in my kayak when I just go out paddling by myself. Um, it opens up like this. It's relatively nice, but let's talk about the things that I'm getting rid of, right? So up here is gauze. That's good, I'm gonna leave those. And right here is band-aids and some moleskin. That's not bad. I'll leave those. That is a little tiny piece of roller gauze that I don't really like. First aid manual. More gauze. Good. I, I don't quite know what I would do with that. That is, these two items in particular are useless. That's about five feet of tape. That is a super narrow uh, ace wrap. And so I'm just going to dispose of both of those. I'll keep that, but probably replace it. Um, here I've got, um, first aid burn cream, hydrocortisone cream, which is sort of, uh, an anti-itch, uh, topical anesthetic, which is probably just alcohol. It's benzocaine. Pills, this is pain reliever, pain reliever, aspirin, Benadryl, Cetaphan. What is Cetaphan? Oh, non aspirin pain reliever, pain reliever, bunch of wound wipes, alcohol wipes. Triple biotic, uh, antibiotic ointments, um, which is bacitrace and neomycin and polymyxin, I think that says. Uh, all of these are going to have expiration dates on them. Do not use if packet is open. I don't see an, an expiration date on this guy. This expires in 2024, 23, 23. Keep in mind right now it's more than halfway through 2022. 23, no expiration on those. Um, so here's the deal. I'm going to keep these. I'm going to dump this. I, I Yeah, I'm going to dump that. That's going to go away. That's going to go away. Those are going to go away. All of these are going to go away. I'm going to dump those. Those are all garbage. So here is what I am left with, right? Comes with these little trauma shears. These are not bad, but I'm going to replace them with those. I'm going to start adding things to this. So let's see the things that I'm going to add. I'm going to add a uh, Knoll's wound pack to this. I'm going to add... Uh, full-size roller gauze to this. I'm going to add an ace wrap to this. I'm going to add a cravat to this. 
I'm going to add four pairs of gloves to this. It's got actually a fairly good tweezer, but I might, re the next time I do a tweezer man order, I might replace those with tweezer mans. I'm going to add more gauze. I'm going to add more gauze. Irrigation syringe. I'm going to add a non a bigger gauze. Uh, look, wound cleansing can go in there. Let's throw those let's throw those wound wipes in there. Let's fold them over so they pack a little smaller. Uh, I am not going to use those wound cleansers in wounds. I'm going to use them around wounds. Um, these are all going to get packed inside here. That's going to go down there. Oh, is that going to fit? Yeah, that's going to fit. Let's see if we can hide this in the back. Oh, I might need a smaller pair of those. Gloves can go down here. Cravat's going to go down there. That just needs a small pair of trauma shears. Oh, oh, small pair of trauma shears in my in my bag of extra goodies. Will it still zip? Yes, it closes. It is ready to go. Okay, so the rest of this stuff is garbage. I'll keep these just for the heck of it. Um, but all of these disposables I'm going to throw out, and here is why. Chances are they're going to expire before I have a chance to use them. Chances are I don't actually need them. Uh, instead of three different kinds of pain relievers, I'm just going to throw in like Advil or Motrin or something like that in a small plastic container with a cotton ball so that they don't bounce around in there. Um, but the rest of those are garbage. This is useless. This is like probably not particularly sticky, not particularly sticky, and not particularly long. So that's going to go in the garbage. This I'll save just in case. I'll throw it in my bag, and that I'll throw in my bag just in case. Um, but keep in mind these plastic things, which you can see are already bent in here, um, just throw those out. They're not plastic, I'm sorry. These metal things that are in here, um, which are supposed to, you're used to close a an Acer wrap, just throw them out. They're they're garbage. You can just you can just tuck the Acer wrap into itself, uh, and it'll be closed. Um, and so that's what I would do with that stuff. Um, and that's how I handle first aid kits. Now, in the past, I used to have three that were this size, and I had one in my um, backpacking kit. I had one in my mountain biking kit, and I had one in my paddling kit. I shrunk down all of my gear. And so I got rid of those. I actually sold them when I did a big gear purge. Um, and so now I have big, small, uh, small, medium, big that I carry with me based on what I'm doing. I also, I'm not mountain biking anymore, things like that. So um, I didn't need all those little kits. So it was time to get rid of them. Um, and I updated to a newer one to sort of start building. To the people who say, I wanna just buy the kit, look at all that stuff you pulled out of there. I just wanna buy the empty kit and then fill it. The problem with that is that the stuff that I'm getting in there that I like is being bought is is being bought by Hart or REI or Helen Back or ADK uh, or Adventure Medical Kits, anyone at huge discounts because they're buying them in bulk. And so unless you have the ability to get stuff at bulk costs, like you work at a doctor's office, you work in a hospital, or you're an EMT, uh, it doesn't make sense to just buy the kit. So um, buy the kit like this, pull the stuff out of it you're never going to use, add the stuff to it you're going to use. Okay, one more thing I want to talk about is blister care. So historically, we have dealt with blisters using 
uh, moleskin, which still works well. I still carry moleskin. Um, here's uh, moleskin, which is also available in different thicknesses. There's moleskin, there's mole foam, there's mole padding. You can buy moleskin in pre-cut shapes, which is really nice. You don't have to deal with having uh, shears in the backcountry. Um, I have switched dealing with blisters to stuff like KT tape or, um, or rock tape. And so the nice thing about this is it's super thin. The adhesive is um, really sticky, so it'll stay on your feet really well. And uh, it's slippery. So like if you put it over a hot spot, it'll rub the hot spot instead of rubbing your skin. Works really well. It's less work. It's better for preventative. Don't put it over a blister. Pre-blister works really, really well. Or if you're one of those people that's like, I always get a blister in this spot. Use KT tape or rock tape or Luco tape, all doing the same thing. Um, rock tape is a little bit less expensive than KT tape, so I like it a little bit more. And so I add that to all of my first aid kits. I forgot to mention that a little bit earlier. Okay, that's how I do first aid kits. Tweak these and play with them uh, so that you get what you need out of a first aid kit. Um, and if you have questions, feel free to email me. Um, I'm still doing free first aid kit consultations. Email me, brett at adventureotaku.com. Um, I'm happy to help you sort of plan out your first aid kit. Hey, I'll see you on the water or at least outside. Have a great day.